Well, imagine being trapped in the worst place imaginable with air so vile you can barely breathe. Bill Weiss reveals the horrifying experience of that reality when he spent 23 minutes in hell. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. So is hell a real place? What is it really like? And why should people take what the Bible says about it seriously? Our guest today knows full well the answers to these questions. In fact, he has firsthand experience. Imagine getting a glimpse of the torment of eternity away from the presence of God. How would it impact you? Take a look. You know, my wife and I were at a prayer meeting that we attended every Sunday night. Nothing unusual about the night. We came home like any other normal night. And I got up at 3 o'clock in the morning to just get a glass of water. And suddenly I was pulled out of my body, like being drawn up out of your body. And I found myself falling through the air down this long tunnel. And it was getting hotter and hotter. And I entered into this open cavern area. And I landed on an actual stone floor in a prison cell in hell. Well, he's the founder of Soul Choice Ministries, and he's here to share his remarkable story of spending 23 minutes in hell. Please welcome Bill Weiss. Hello there. Hello. <laughs> Happy what a music blessing to be with you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, it's so good to have you. You know, I mean, it's, I mean, watching even just that little bit, you're thinking, okay, how are we going to tell the story and get into this subject. You know, it began like any other normal night. Bill had done his usual routine, but little did he know he was about to be experiencing something so jarring that it would change his life and his perception forever. So Bill, take us back to that evening. It was in what, what I mean, you remember the day, the yes. year, the time. November 23rd, 1998. Mm. Um, this is when this happened, and we were at a prayer meeting. We attended every Sunday night. Nothing unusual about the night. I had never studied the topic of hell. I've never gone to dark movies. I've never drank. I've never taken drugs, and I never had a vision before. We came home, went to bed, and I got up at 3 o'clock in the morning just to get a glass of water. And as I was walking through the living room, something pulled me out of my body, like being drawn up out of your body. I saw my body fall to the floor. And so this was not a near-death experience. This was an out-of-body experience that would be classified as a vision. And you were Christian. Yes, for 28 years yeah, at that point. Yeah. You know, in 2 Corinthians 12, 2, Paul, when he was caught up into heaven in a vision, he said, whether in the body or out of the body, he didn't know. Mm -hmm. Well, the Lord showed me that I left my body. So the only way a Christian can see hell is in a dream or a vision. Mm -hmm. And so I found myself falling through the air down this long tunnel. And it was getting hotter and hotter. And I passed mm -hmm. through this open cavern-like area, and I landed on an actual stone floor in a prison cell in hell. Rough-hewn stone walls, bars, filthy, stinking smoke filled, but like a dungeon. How did you know it was hell? There's no question when you're in hell that you know it for sure it is. It is so hot, it's, it's way beyond the ability to stay in life. You know, scientists say the center of the earth is 12,000 degrees, so I don't know what the temperature was, but it was unbearable. And um, there's so many reasons I'll get to why I knew it was hell. Okay. But, um, you know, there's many scriptures. And, you know, I love to give all the scripture. We can only give a few for the time's sake. But I just give a couple to do with prison sure, cells. Do it. Isaiah 24, 22 says, And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. Proverbs 7, 27 mentions going down to hell to the chambers of death. And where chambers means inner rooms. Job 17, 16 says that they'll go down to the bars or the pit. Well, that's where I first found myself, in this prison cell with rough-hewn stone walls and actual bars. And um, I, know, I, I looked up and I saw these two demons in the cell, mm. reptilish in appearance, bumps and scales all over the one's body, uh, huge jaw, sunken in eyes, claws about a foot long. Oh. And these particular two were about 12 or 13 feet tall. Are these fallen angels? You, these are fallen you angels. You think these are fallen? Did, you, yes. did, did they have like wings or anything no. like that? No, they were reptilish in appearance. Okay. Wow. And there's only one scripture in um, Revelation 16 that talks about demons that look like frogs, which, uh, you know, that's a, a wow. reptile type of a appearance. Yeah. But they're small demons, but these particular two were large. And um, 
I, I wanted to get up and run out of this prison cell. That was yeah. my reaction. But I had no physical strength in my body. But see, Isaiah 14, 9 and 10 says, Hell from beneath is moved to meet thee at thy coming. They will say, Art thou become weak as we? Psalms 88, 4 says, I am counted with a man that goes down into the pit. I am as a man that has no strength. So you have no physical strength in hell. And these demons have great strength. You have none. And so just one of the things you have to endure for all eternity. You know, if you ever had the flu and you felt weak, yeah. it's a yeah. thousand times worse than that. You have no physical strength in your body. Wow. And these demons were blaspheming and cursing God. Could you mm. see them? Like, or was it so dark that you couldn't see No, I see could him? see them at this point okay. because it was God's presence there to illuminate it so I could see. But in a moment, he withdrew his light and it resumed its normal state of absolute pitch black darkness. But when I could see them, uh, like I said, they're, uh, they were blaspheming and cursing God. They had extreme hatred for God. Then they directed that hatred for God towards me. I wonder why, what have I done to them? Mm. The one demon picked me up and threw me into the wall of the prison cell. I collapsed. I felt as if every bone in my body had broken. The other demon grabbed me from behind and dug its claws into my chest and just tore the flesh open. Oh. I could not believe this was actually happening. How could I be alive through this? I should be dead. But you're still alive. But the interesting thing, when he clawed and your chest opened up, right. there was... There was no blood or water. It was all dry. Oh. But Leviticus 17, 11 says the life of the flesh is in the blood. Well, yeah. there's no life in hell, so there's no blood. And Zechariah 9, 11 says, Thy prisoners out of the pit where there is no water. There's not one drop of water in hell. And these demons have no mercy over you whatsoever. But, you know, Psalms 103, 17 says, The mercy of the Lord is upon those that fear him. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't fear him in hell. So you don't derive the benefit of mercy. And um, mm. so I couldn't, I couldn't escape this place. But uh, about this time, it went dark. Now, I believed, again, it was God withdrawing his light and it resumed its normal state. But you didn't know at that point that you no. were a believer. It's like God lifted that right. from you. Right, exactly. God uh, blocked it from my mind that I was a Christian. I was a Christian for 28 years at that point, but he hid that fact from me. Oh, gosh. And you say, where's that in the Bible? In Luke 24, 16, when Jesus appeared to the disciples on the road to Emmaus, it says their eyes were holding that they should not know him. John MacArthur's commentary, Matthew Henry's commentary point out they were kept by God from recognizing him. God hid it from their minds, and he hid it from my mind for this reason. See, if I was there as a Christian, which I was, but I didn't know, yeah. I would have known. Praise God, he's getting me out of here. Yeah. Right? Uh, as Christians, yeah. we know our destiny is heaven. But he wanted me to experience what they feel. The hopelessness. Hopelessness. Yeah. Were you able to feel scared? Like, were you able to feel emotion? Oh, yes, yes. But the, the hopelessness, I just want people to get that because Isaiah 38, 18 says, those who go down to the pit cannot hope for thy truth. And we know Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. They have no hope for him because it's too late. So, and I know it, that, you know, you were talking about the fear level, why right. you, that it was beyond anything that the world could ever imagine. And then you have a story to tell. Right. of something that happened to you in your early 20s to compare it to. Right. So tell that story and then parallel those two. Okay. You know, the, the fear level in hell is so intense, it's harder to compare it. But I had an experience I had when I was 17 years old. I used to surf. And we were surfing off Cocoa Beach, Florida, and I was attacked by a 10-foot tiger shark. Mm. The guy next to me got his leg torn off, blood all over the water. Oh the God. shark came back, bit my board in half, grabbed my leg, and pulled me down under the water. Now, if you ever had an experience with sharks, and this was a tiger shark, they don't let you go. Um, anyway, the fear that I felt at that moment paled in comparison to what you feel in hell. It wouldn't even register. So can you all imagine that? No. Think about how no, horrific that would have been in the ocean for a tiger shark, shark to pull you under. And yet you said it wouldn't have even registered right. to the fear that you had at that moment right. as you were laying in the floor of hell. Right. Psalm 73, 18 and 19 says, You cast them down into destruction where they are utterly consumed with terror. So this terror is for all eternity. You don't escape it. But thank God the shark, that was a miracle happened that day. The shark opened his mouth and let me go. And I didn't have a mark in my leg. <laughs> That's impossible. And you weren't yeah. saved at God the time. was looking out for me, and I was not even saved. Oh, my goodness. But I got saved immediately after that. <laughs> so. Yeah, I bet. I've been serving God ever since, you know, and God's been so good to me. Yeah. And uh, looked out for me all these years. So I am so grateful to be a okay, Christian. Okay, I want you to go back to, um, okay, you said one of the demons picked you up, threw you against the wall. The other one ripped his chest open. And then the right. other one 
use the claws to rip your chest open, but you're still alive. And you're looking at yourself thinking, how could I be alive? But there's no blood, there's no water. Right. But you're feeling the pain like yeah. you would here on earth, right? I was, but I have to explain one thing quickly. I understood that most of it was being blocked. I know it sounds strange, but the Lord explained on the way back, he blocked most of the pain that I normally would have felt. Wow. But he did allow me to feel some so I could relate to people. It's not metaphorical. It's not a state of the mind. It's real literal pain you're going to feel in hell. And the amount I felt was enough. Thank God he blocked most of it. But it's real literal pain. And I know I had a body. Matthew 10, 28 says, Fear him who was able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And remember Luke 16, the rich man, yeah. he wanted a drop of water to cool his tongue. So he had a mouth to speak, he had eyes, he had a tongue, and he thirsted, he wanted water. So even though the body may be, it's a spiritual body there. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, talks about a natural body and a spirit body. So it's not the same as this, but it looked like this. My body looked like But it it's eternal. Now. Yeah. Right. It, it will not die. Exactly. I mean, that we're going to live forever somewhere in heaven or right. in hell. Okay, so what happened after that? Because you said you didn't have any strength, and I asked you, were you able to stand up? I could stand up, barely, but it took so much effort just to stand. And um, then about that time it went dark, like I said, and uh, yeah, I couldn't see anything. Well, the Lord took me out. I know it was the Lord, but he took me out of that prison cell and placed me over next to this large raging pit of fire. And this pit was about a mile across. Now, I just understood that. I don't know how I knew that, but your senses are keener in hell than they are here. Mm -hmm. I knew it was about a mile across, a huge hole in the ground with flames raging high up in this open cavern. And it wasn't metaphorical flames. I felt the heat. I saw the fire. But more importantly, it's what the scripture says. Psalms 11, 6 says, Upon the wicked he will rain fire and brimstone and a horrible tempest. Matthew 13, 49 says, The angels shall sever the wicked from the just and cast the wicked into a furnace of fire. But, Joni, this is where I could first see people. I could see the outlines of people through this, through the flames. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really dark, but I could see through the flames, and there were thousands of people, maybe millions, screaming and burning. And, you know, you cannot distinguish a man from a woman. They just look like skeletons. So you didn't recognize anybody? You couldn't recognize anyone. No one would know Was who you Was there flesh hanging on the It skeleton? looked like they had flesh hanging off their bones. Oh. I mean, most of us have never seen a person on fire. It's the most horrendous sight to see somebody burning. And the screams from all the people, it's so loud and deafening. You won't escape that, but for all eternity, you have to endure that. But Isaiah 57, 21 says, There's no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. There's no peace of mind of any kind. You know, but Isaiah 32, 18 says, My people dwell in a quiet resting place. You don't enjoy quiet because you're not God's people. And um, I understood that I was down deep in the earth. I just had that understanding. I descended to get there. I ascended when I left. But more importantly, there's 49 scriptures that talk about where the current hell is. And I just give two. Ezekiel 26, 20, Numbers 16, 32, and 33. Very clear. It's down deep. But I understood that. And I understood there were different levels of torment and degrees of punishment. Really? Remember Jesus said where Matthew 23, 14, you shall receive the greater damnation. That infers a lesser damnation. Or Matthew 10, 15, he said, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. That infers a less tolerable. Or Hebrews 10, 28, of how much worse of a punishment. So there are different levels. But the point is, there is no tolerable, comfortable level in hell. Did you want to sleep? You, you want to sleep. You're physically exhausted. I felt like I was there 23 weeks without sleeping. And you know what you feel like after two nights. If you try to stay up two nights without sleeping, you're pretty much a wreck. Well, in hell you need to sleep also, but you never get to go to sleep. But see, Revelation 14, 10, and 11 says, uh, And they shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the Lamb and the presence of the holy angels. And the smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. Now, that primarily means no rest from the torment, but no rest of any kind. Because Isaiah 57, 20 said, the wicked are like the troubled sea that cannot rest. So you can't rest in hell. You never get to go to sleep. Was that the worst sight, seeing that lake of fire? Seeing all the people seeing burning. Seeing all the people and hearing the screams. And was that the, the screams. worst thing that you saw? Yeah, was it, it worse than seeing the demons? Yes, it was, because you want to be able to help the people, but you can't help yourself. And the screams I'll never forget. I mean, I just can still hear those screams 
uh, the torment of what all these people. What did it smell like? The stench is the most foul, putrid, worse than any open sewer. But remember, Jesus rebuked the foul spirits, Mark 9, 25. Mm -hmm. Demons have a foul, disgusting, Ew. decaying yeah. odor to them. Yeah, but also the smell of burning sulfur. And if you go to Hawaii to the volcano, they have signs posted where you cannot go past a certain point because the toxicity of the sulfur coming up, it's called sulfur dioxide. And that's toxic. It will kill you to breathe it. Well, sulfur is just another word for brimstone. And the word brimstone's mentioned 14 times in the Bible. So you're breathing in this foul, putrid, disgusting air that you don't want to breathe. But it's even worse than that because there's not enough oxygen to breathe. So you have to fight for even the tiniest bit of air. And what did that feel like? It was like this. And maybe only an asthma patient can relate to this, but it was like... Wow. That was as much air as you could get. So any moment you feel like you're going to suffocate. But Isaiah 42, 5 says, the Lord gives breath to the people upon the earth. Mm. You're not upon the earth. You're down deep beneath the earth. God's very specific with his word. What about, um, the Bible talks about maggots. Yes. Did you, did you see that? I was standing on a bed of maggots and they were crawling all over everything and everybody that I could see next to that pit. You know, Isaiah 14, 11 says, where the maggot will be spread under thee and the worm will cover thee. And that's why Jesus said, where their worm dies not, and he used the word maggot, because the flesh is never fully consumed in hell. So as Job 24, 20 says, the maggot will feed sweetly on thee. I mean, is that disgusting enough? Ugh. These are all these things that you have to endure in hell for all eternity. Yeah, you know, a lot of people talk about that have gone on to heaven and come back, they talk about the glorified body that you'll have that will live forever. This body won't. Right. But... The fact of the matter is, when it when an eternal soul is created, God can't undo that. Right, we're he, made in His but, image. But the thing that He did for us is, He made provision, because the, the Bible talks about hell has enlarged itself. Right. He never intended for mankind to go there. He made provision for us, and we're going to talk about that. But tell us, how did you get out? And was it after you were there at the lake of fire or the pit? Yes. What I was happened? observing all these people burning and demons shoving people back in, tormenting people. And I was beneath this uh, cavern walls that ascended upward. And there were demons all along the walls, twisted, deformed, grotesque creatures, snakes, maggots. And something began raising me up this dark tunnel. And it became absolute pitch black darkness. And then suddenly in this dark darkness, this, this bright light appeared. I knew immediately who it was. There was no doubt in my mind. I didn't see his face. I just saw the outline of a man standing in a bright, pure, holy light. And I just called out his name. I said, Jesus. And he said two words. He said, I am. When he said that, I went out. I don't know if I passed out or died. I can only explain that through Revelation 1, 16. When John saw him, he said his countenance was bright as the sun, and I fell at his feet as one dead. And after a time, he touched me. And when he touched me, I was at his feet. And it hit me so strongly that if he wouldn't have gone to the cross, I would be in that place for all eternity. Mm -hmm. I was so grateful for the cross. Even though I've been a Christian for 28 years, it hit me so strongly. I just want to thank him. I didn't want to ask him any questions. I just, honestly, you just want to worship him and thank him. I kept saying that over and over again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for taking me to heaven. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and I just have to explain one thing. For the first moments, I felt so dirty next to the Lord because he's so clean and pure. Mm -hmm. And But he didn't want me to feel uncomfortable, and he removed that from me right away because as Christians, he's removed that from us. And I just felt such a peace and a love that was overwhelming. You can't even describe the love he has. And uh, maybe I'll get to that in a minute, but um, I just felt so at home that I made it, I'm home with the Lord. And he had placed it back in my mind that I was a Christian, you know? So, you know, you have to remember one second ago, I was in he hell and I thought that I was there for all eternity. And then he put me, now I realize I'm not, I'm a Christian, I'm going to heaven. Uh, it was such a relief. And you um, ask him questions. I what did. were some of the questions you asked I didn't him? ask him, I just had thoughts. And he answers our thoughts afar off, Psalms 139 too. But um, I thought, Lord, why did, why did you send me this horrible place? And he said, many people do not believe hell is real. Mm. He said, even some of my own people do not believe hell exists. 
That statement surprised me. I thought Christians believe in hell. Mm -hmm. But we have found out since many Christians believe in annihilationism. That's a teaching that says you simply cease to exist if you deny Jesus. Or universalism. That's a teaching that says everybody gets saved. Yeah. Uh, or soul sleep. These are all false teachings that a lot of churches are teaching. So I'm just a signpost to point people to the scriptures. It's not important they believe my experience. Just check out the word of God. Everything I'm saying is already in the Bible. Yeah. yeah. And so he wanted me to point that out. But I said, Lord, um, why did those demons hate me so much? He said, because you're made in my image and they hate me. Mm. Remember John 15, 18, Jesus said, they hated me before they hated you. So they have an extreme hatred for mankind. I thought, Lord, I don't want to tell anybody about this experience. They're going to think I'm crazy or had a bad dream. He said, it's not your job to convict their hearts. It's the Holy Spirit's. Mm. He said, you just go and tell them. I said, yes, sir, I'll go. But I have to admit, I complained for seven years. I told my best friend three months later, and it spread from there. And I, I you know, I'm a conservative person by nature. I didn't want to be identified with this. I had a real estate company. I was making a lot of money. Oh, wow. And we started getting invited all over the country. There was no book then. So for seven years, my wife and I traveled. We paid our own way. We never took any money from anybody. And I complained and said, Lord, I feel uncomfortable. And how many people got saved while you were complaining? Oh, thousands and thousands. <laughs> <laughs> but God put up with me, you know, complaining, yeah, yeah. you know, and one day he spoke to me and at least I heard him finally. And he said, Bill, it's not about you being comfortable. It's about you being obedient. Mm, that's so I good. felt so con convicted. Yeah, yeah. I repented and I said, Lord, I'll go wherever you want. I'm sorry I ever complained, you know, and now if one person can come to the light of the scripture and avoid that place, then it's worth any uncomfortableness I would ever feel. I would be remiss if I didn't give you an opportunity now to pray, and you say, wait, what? Yeah, God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. And he did make provision for us. I'm gonna let you explain that, and then pray a prayer, and let us repeat it after you. Okay. And let's give people an opportunity to make sure they don't go to hell. And you say, well, this just seems so simple. Well, the gospel's simple. And I'm gonna let Bill, Bill explain that, but this is an important moment for you, and I want you to stop what you're doing, and I want you to listen, and I want you to allow the Holy Spirit to touch you in a way and allow God to do something supernatural in your life that's never been done before. Bill? You know, God loves every person so very much that he died a horrible death on a cross to keep us out. And you know, because he loves you, he gives you a free will to choose. You have a choice. But Revelation 20, 15 says, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. God actually has a book, and he's going to look to see if your name is in it. And you can have your name in it today. If you want to do that, then I'm going to ask you to say a prayer. And this is going to come from your own heart. And I don't mean just to uh, confess Jesus and try to fit him in your life somewhere. This is a turning from sin and agreeing to follow Jesus. It's a commitment to the Lord. So if you're willing to do that and repent, then just say this prayer. Say, Dear God in heaven, Dear I know that I've sinned, I know that I've sinned. and I cannot save myself. I believe you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross for me, that he was crucified, and he was crucified. died and was buried, died and was buried. but rose again, rose again and lives forevermore. And lives forevermore. I, ask I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I'm sorry. Come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. You are the Son of God. You are the Son of God. Thank you for taking me to heaven. Thank you for taking me to heaven. And I now confess. And I now confess. I'm a born again Christian. I'm a born again Christian. Going to heaven. Going to heaven. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I just want to tell you something. This is the best day of your life. And everything is about to change. And that doesn't mean you're not going to have problems. You're not going to have to go through situations. But this is the thing. I think about that scripture where Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. And that's the promise that you have on this earth. This earth is just, this life is just a stepping stone to the life to come. Eternity is a long, long time. And that's why we take the time to produce this program, have guests like Bill, because we care about your soul. We, kill, we care about eternity. And so I'm so excited that you prayed that prayer. Don't be ashamed of it. Share it with somebody. And I just pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that you will send people across their path, that you'll open doors, that you'll speak to them supernaturally, and just let them know that you are with them in a tangible way like never before. And we thank you for that. 
in Jesus' name. So I guess you still go and speak and share your story at different yes. churches. And not only churches, you probably do men's events and other things as well. Yes, we've been all around the world, speak yeah. at all different events. And we're honored to go wherever God calls us. Yeah. How many scriptures did you memorize after this experience? I know, I feel like you've told us like 50 at least. I know. No, no, he has memorized how many? About 500. So. Yeah, wow. because wow. He, after the experience, he went back into the Word of God to see, is this legitimate? The right. things that I saw, are they in the Word of God? And it all lined up because the Word of God is true. What did your wife say? After the six, did you like wake her up immediately? Well, when I came back in my body, I started screaming because I, the, yeah. the memories of hell. So I was traveling back with the Lord. I had no fear whatsoever. But when he left, the memories came back in my mind. Uh. I started screaming. It woke her up. First thing she did is look at our digital clock, which read 323. I got up at 3 o'clock. That's where the 23 comes from. But she heard me screaming in torment on the, on the floor in our living room. And so I just screamed out, pray for me, pray for me. The Lord has taken me to hell. Did you feel the stress, the physical stress in your body when you came to yes. about everything that you had just witnessed? Like, did your yes. body hold on Anxiety. to that? I w yes, I was exhausted, physically exhausted. But I didn't have any nightmares, nothing. The Lord removed all that. So I was fine. Uh, but I was just physically tired. Uh, from are, you, are you 100% convinced that there is a place called hell and you've made it your life's mission to, to tell yeah. people... <laughs> I, I'm 100% positive there is a place called hell. Jesus talked about it in 46 different verses. And so it's clear all through the Bible there is a hell. I've been there. Many other people I've met that have also had a near-death experience or a clinical death experience have also experienced. I'm not the only one. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, Did you were you able to recognize like age in terms of children or did it just seem like were there a good question. children there? Uh, I had That's the uh, impression there were no children there. And I, the, the, uh, the outlines I saw, the people, the skeletons, they were adult size. And also the screams sounded like adult screams. You can tell the difference in a child. And you, I remember one thing you said is that when you were in hell, before you knew that you were saved, that you had clear memories yes. about your wife and oh, yeah. earth and people oh. on the earth. And that was right. tormenting that you knew you could not see her. Exactly. You have your full memory, just like Luke 16, the rich man. He was concerned about his brothers. He didn't want them to come there. He yes. knew they had to repent. I thought about my wife. I'll never see her again. And that thought alone was really tormenting, to never say goodbye to her. Mm. Never tell her I love her. I can't ever hold her again. Mm. You don't realize how tormenting a thought that is. Yeah. God sent his son to pay the price for our sin, to rescue us from that terrible place because he loves you and he loves me that much. So if you just prayed that prayer, I want you to call the number on the screen. Let us know so we can send you this free book. But I do want to thank Bill for sharing his powerful story with us. Uh, it's not, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a pleasant story, but it's a true story. You know, if you really love people and you really believe the word of God, then you're going to share truth with them. And that's what we did today because we do love you and we don't want anyone to ever experience hell. I've interviewed people that have died and gone to heaven. That's an amazing, you could look up some of those uh, programs that we've done, amazing stories. But this is an important story to hear because Jesus had more to say about hell than he did heaven. Right. Is that true? Yes, that's true. So again, uh, pick up a copy of his book, 23 Minutes in Hell. And for more on his ministry, you can visit him online at soulchoiceministries.org. And as always, let us know your thoughts on today's program. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. We love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really excited about what God has for you. He loves you so much. I mean, he really, really does. He stopped you from what you're doing today. And the fact that you stopped to watch for just a moment just should let you know how much he loves you. And I'll tell you what, uh, I'm excited about what your future is going to be because God does have an incredible plan and continued purpose for your life, no matter what you've done, no matter how many mistakes you've made, he's not through with you. So you remember that. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for today.